of all the things that are important to you, where would you rank safety? Kids don't think about it when they're playing. But if you have a family, you want them to be safe. You want to be safe while you're at home or when you're at work. We all have a lot of responsibility and people who depend on us. In order to be safe and return home at the end of the day, important safety rules must be followed. Lift truck operators are just like millions of other professionals who earn their living by operating equipment or vehicles. It takes skill, training, and experience realizing that no job on the ground or in the air can be done at the expense of safety. Remember, you're working on a piece of machinery that weighs about 9,000 pounds. With a load, it increases up to 14,000 pounds. That's equivalent to six cars. Lift truck operators have a difficult job. They lift heavy loads and they maneuver in tight spaces. Safety isn't something anyone sets out to ignore, but tight schedules, heavy equipment, pedestrian traffic, and congested workspace can compromise safety any hour, any minute, any time. Unfortunately, accidents can happen, but accidents happen more and cost more than we realize. Between lost time, increased insurance premiums, and litigation, it's common for accidents to cost a company over a million dollars. Some companies cannot survive the aftermath and close their doors permanently. Then there is personal injury. Let's not forget the family, especially the children. One accident can cost a child a lifetime of happy memories. But we can improve safety with the right training and the right rules. Government studies have shown effective training programs improve lift truck operator safety performance by as much as 70%. The Canadian Standards Association has published a study that outlines the minimum training a lift truck operator should have. This standard was created due to the hundreds of accidents, many of which are fatal, that occur in Canada each year. Statistics from the Ministry of Labor report the following causes of critical accidents. Collision, 47%. Load shifting or load falling, 16%. Loading or unloading forklift, 8%. Person falling from lift truck, 7%. Overcome by carbon monoxide, 6%. Operator or worker falling or jumping from lift truck, 5%. Tip over and rollovers, 4%. Accidents on loading docks, 4%. Explosions, 3%. With numbers like these and the cost of accidents, it's no wonder that the labor laws require that employers give proper training to all their lift truck operators. Also, only trained and authorized personnel can operate a specific piece of equipment. When you put your life in the hands of professionals, you do not want them to cut corners. Pilots, for example, use a checklist to do a pre-flight inspection before every flight. 99 times out of 100, everything checks out okay. But it is the pre-flight inspection that contributes greatly to safe air travel. It's the operator's responsibility to inspect the lift truck before the beginning of each shift and keep a written record. At times, this task may seem unimportant. However, 
6.1% of accidents are caused by improper maintenance procedures. The objective of the inspection is to look for damage and to make sure the truck is in safe operating condition and meets the manufacturer's specifications. A good place to begin an inspection is at the fuel source. In the case of an electric truck, start at the battery. With a propane truck, begin with the liquid propane cylinder. Make sure the locating pin is in place and the pressure relief valve is pointing upwards. Check the fuel level. Don't take a chance on running out where it is dangerous to refuel. Check the connectors and hoses. Then listen, smell, and look for leaks. Frosting will indicate even the smallest leak. Be careful. Touching this with your bare hands can cause a serious frost burn. Check the cylinder tie-down latches to make sure the propane cylinder is secure. Open up the engine cover and inspect the engine compartment and fluid levels. Check the battery, the engine oil, transmission fluid, the fan belts and hoses. It's important that they are not frayed or worn. Check the brake fluid reservoir. Hydraulic oil level. The radiator coolant. And finally, inspect the air filter. A dirty filter can increase harmful or poisonous exhaust gases. Close the engine cover and secure the propane cylinder. Next, inspect the tires and wheels on the right side of the truck. Ensure the overhead guard is in good shape. Are the lug bolts present and tight to the touch? If not, call for repairs. Loose or missing lug bolts can cause damage to the truck or injure someone. Remember, do not operate the lift truck until repairs are made. Are there chunks of tire missing? cuts or objects embedded in the tires. How about wire, plastic strapping, string or foreign objects lodged in behind the wheel? These can cause costly damage or serious injury. If you're inspecting a truck with pneumatic tires, check the air pressure as outlined in the operator's manual. An underinflated tire will lean the truck to one side and will decrease stability. Notice that when the load is being lifted, it is actually moving away from the center of the truck. It wouldn't take too much to tip this truck over. Examine the mast and forks. The forks must be level. Look for excessive wear or cracks in the hanger welding or in the heel. The forks must be evenly spaced and the fork pins locked into place. Equal tension in the lift chains is important. This will prevent uneven lifting. Verify that the chain is well lubricated. Inspect the hydraulic tilt cylinders and lift cylinders. They must be free from leaking hydraulic fluid. Inspect the hoses around the mast. This is where leaks often start. Make sure the mast channel is free of foreign objects, such as pieces of wood or wire. Complete a thorough examination of the wheels and tires on the left side of the truck. To start the engine, make sure the parking brake is on. Listen for any unusual noises as the engine warms up. Pull the lift lever and fully raise and lower the forks to ensure free movement of the mast. Once the forks have been lowered, test the side shifter or any attachments if installed. Tilt the mast back and forth, making sure all hydraulic movements are smooth and operational.
release the parking brake and drive forward or reverse about 20 feet in total, ensuring the steering and brakes are working properly. Check the brakes. The brake pedal must not reach the floorboard. If it does, the brakes are not functioning properly and the truck should be taken out of operation until repaired. When finished, turn off the engine and apply the parking brake. Look under the truck to check for any oil leaks. Oil patches can cause serious injury to pedestrians. Next, inspect the horn, lights, and gauges. Observe pedestrian warnings and any other electrical systems your truck might have. A lift truck cannot be put into service until it has a legible manufacturer's nameplate securely fastened. Make sure the seat belt is not frayed or torn and that it latches properly. All safety labels and instructions must be in place and readable. The overhead guard and load backrest extension are important safety features. Make sure they are in place and secure. Finally, complete and file an operator checklist and report any defects to your supervisor in writing. If you're on the job and notice that your truck is unsafe to operate, park it and tag it out of operation. Report specific problems to your supervisor. Remember, Failure to do this could cause injury to yourself and to the employees working around you. A typical counterbalance lift truck has a three-point suspension system. The rear axle pivots at a single point in the center of the axle to compensate for uneven floors. This forms the stability triangle base. With the added dimensions of lift height, it forms a three-dimensional triangle similar to a pyramid. When the combined center of gravity stays within the triangle, the truck is stable. Move the center of gravity forward of the triangle, as when a load is too heavy or too high, the truck will tip forward. This is called longitudinal stability. Over one quarter of all lift truck fatalities occur when a lift truck tips over. Understanding the principle of lateral stability will reduce the chance of your truck falling sideways. What do you think? Is a lift truck more stable with a load or without a load while turning? As this lift truck turns with a load, the combined center of gravity moves towards the edge of the triangle. Now, notice what happens when we complete a similar turn, this time without a load. Notice the center of gravity is much closer to the edge of the triangle. The closer it is, the less it takes for the truck to become unbalanced and tip over. This is why an unloaded truck should be operated just as carefully while cornering. Let's look at some causes of tip overs. Sharp turns, raised masts, unstable loads, potholes, uneven surfaces, wet surfaces, and driving on ramps, to name a few. On October 17, 1994, Scott was operating a lift truck outside. He was attempting to pick up a load of empty pallets. While making a sharp turn, he hit a small pothole. Scott was fortunate. He had been properly trained 
he knew how to best survive a tip-over situation. First of all, Scott was wearing a seat belt. When the lift truck tipped, he stayed inside the operator compartment, his best chance for survival. He braced his feet and held on tight to the steering wheel with both hands while leaning in the opposite direction of the fall. Scott was able to escape with minor injuries. Never attempt to jump out of your lift truck if you encounter a tip over. Had Scott tried to jump clear of the truck, the overhead guard would have struck him, crushing him to death. When a lift truck is in motion, the dynamic forces such as lifting, tilting, turning, and stopping can cause the combined center of gravity to move outside the stability triangle, causing the lift truck to tip over. Use slow and gentle maneuvers when operating a lift truck. This will keep the combined center of gravity inside the stability triangle and all of your wheels on the ground. Keep your balance, your life depends on it. Keeping your balance, you have to do it even when you're playing. This mother must think about load distribution and center of gravity just to keep this teeter-totter moving. A lift truck works much like a teeter-totter. The heavy counterweight on the back keeps the rear wheels on the ground. As you can see from this diagram, the front wheels act as a fulcrum between the counterweight and the load just like the pivot point of a teeter-totter. It's the same principle of leverage that allows a young child to lift her mother. Now, let's look at loads. Every object has a center of gravity. These three loads are all the same weight, but because of their different shape, they have a different center of gravity or balance point. When a lift truck picks up a load, the center of gravity of the truck and the center of gravity of the load will produce the combined center of gravity. The combined center of gravity will move in the same direction that the load moves. Now, by law, every lift truck must have a capacity plate or name plate. This shows the maximum weight it is allowed to lift. This truck can lift 5,000 pounds based on the load having a 24-inch load center. The load center is the distance from the face of the forks to the center of gravity of the load. In this example, this 5,000-pound truck with a 24-inch load center will attempt to lift this 5,000-pound load. However, because of the unusual shape of the load, the center of gravity of the load is 30 inches from the face of the forks. Notice how the rear wheels lift off the ground when the capacity of the truck is exceeded. Now, if the truck lifts the load from the opposite side, the center of gravity of the load is only 18 inches from the face of the forks. This load can now be safely lifted. The capacity plate or name plate will also show the maximum lifting height. The higher the lift, the lower the capacity. Attachments such as this carton clamp actually reduce the capacity in two ways. First, the carton clamp moves the load away from the operator, reducing load capacity. Secondly, the weight of the clamp will further reduce load capacity. This 4,000-pound truck will now be rated or limited to lifting a load of 2,500 pounds or less. If a new mast is installed that changes the maximum lifting height, or if an attachment is changed or installed, a new capacity plate or nameplate must be requested and installed.